rolling off the previous video, I want to drive home why expression trees are nice. I'm going to use the entity framework to do a little bit of that. Don't worry about the entity framework. It's not that complex. If you want to learn more about the entity framework, maybe I'll make an entity framework playlist. You don't need to understand too much about the entity framework in this video. The main thing you need to understand is I have this me context here, which inherits db context which is part of the entity framework and essentially it goes to database and pulls data for us and the data I want is these uh, this person on person class I want instances of that let me actually bring my database up here you can see I wrote a simple select clause if you don't understand SQL don't stress it I'm basically saying hey database give me the ID first name last name and age column from the people table and you can see here is the result this is data I made up and put in a table this is a table rows and columns I put it in my my database so there we go let's go back to the code the context will talk to the database and get all that data back and allow me to see that data as person objects so let's just do that I'm gonna say var uh, plumber I'll call it plumber is that how you spell plumber I don't know it's new db context and the reason I called it plumber is you can think of, not DB context, me context, sorry. The reason I called it plumber is you can think of uh, as our application, our, our C sharp dot net application. I'll just say our dot net app is running in one process in the Microsoft Windows space. Then SQL Server is running in its own process. This is SQL, I'll just say SQL, it's short for SQL Server. And it's running on its own process, and it has all the data. Okay, we saw, we just barely saw all the data. It's, it's in charge of this data, data stored in a file, all that database theory. I don't really want to go into that in this video, it's not necessary. All right, but all that data is sitting over here. So the plumber, this me context thing, is, is responsible for making pipes to the SQL process and getting data from the SQL process into our .NET app so we can use it. So let's just do that. I'm going to say for each var person, or actually I can just say person, let's be explicit here, person, person in, hey plumber, please go get me all the people. All right, this people property is something I just wrote here. It's of type DB set of person, don't worry about the DB set. The main thing to know is that it's a set of people the same set that we have right here. So if I run this code as is, uh, oh, it won't compile. Let me person. Let's write line person dot first name plus a space plus person dot last name. Control F5. Run that, and you see. Hey, look at that. Jamie King, Billy Bob, Computer Science Videos dot org. Uh, no plug there for anything. Susie Smith. All right, that's the exact same data we have here in the database. So. The plumber, the DB context, said, SQL, give me all this data, and it came back. So hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. Okay, now we're not dealing with very many people, but I, I want to show you why expression trees are cool. I right, notice we're, we're doing this plumber.people, and if I click on DB set here, which is the type that the people property is, and I hit F12, we can learn some things about the DB set. One is that the DB set implements iQueryable. Okay, it also implements iEnumerable, but the more specific type is iQueryable, and the compiler will resolve any calls to iQueryable that it can, otherwise it'll attempt the iEnumerable later. All right, well, why is that cool? Why is that cool? Let me show you. I'm going to say, let's get this up here. We know people is an iQueryable. I can say dot where, p, p dot, p dot, age is greater than 30. Okay, and we've seen the where before. We saw that in the link videos, and we saw how lambda expressions are converted to code, and we were able to step through the code. But this where, notice as I hover over it, let's control KI, bring that up again. This where is resolving to the iQueryable version. You see that? iQueryable, iQueryable. No longer iEnumerable, it's iQueryable. And then look, look, System.link.expressions.expression of func, right? Not just a func, it's an expression of func. So this lambda expression will be converted 
to the code we saw in the previous videos. It'll generate an expression tree. It'll just generate objects, or it'll generate code that'll generate objects at runtime that represent what this expression is. So then we keep or maintain the meaning of that lambda expression. We don't lose it. Whenever you convert a lambda expression to code, all the details are kind of lost in the code. And, and if you look at missile code, it's kind of, if you're not used to it, it's definitely hard to kind of look at it and say, what, what are they trying to get at here? But since this code will be, or this lambda expression will be converted to objects in the end, then we can look at it and say, oh, it's lambda expression, and they're looking at this parameter here, and then they're looking at a property on that parameter, and they want to know where the age is greater than 30. Oh, I can grab the meaning from that. All right, so this gets converted to objects or data, either way. And thus being converted to objects, the entity framework, which is this magical DB context, can look at those objects and say, what are they trying to get from the database? It looks like they're trying to get the people where their age is greater than 30. All right, and then it'll send a request down to the database saying, hey, give me all the people whose age is greater than 30. Let me see if I can prove that. I have here the SQL Server Profiler, and what this does is it'll look at my database and watch it and say, anybody who talks to the database, I'll tell you about it, Jamie. So I'm going to say, hey, file, all right, let's watch the database here, and I'm really only interested in the bare bones. Um, let's just do batch starting and look through uh, yeah that looks fine let's hit run and so it's just watching it's waiting saying hey anything that happens with the database i'll tell you about it jamie so if i go back over to our code and let's just run this f10 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 uh when i f10 on this the database um the entity framework will talk to the database say give me objects so f10 notice it takes a little bit to return let's go back to the profiler here oh look look at all this stuff and there's a bunch of stuff that went on, but the part I'm interested in is this one, where the select statement looks a lot like the select statement I wrote before. Remember I said, give me the ID column, the first name column, the last name column, the age column from the people table. Well, that's exactly pretty much close to what the Entity Framework sent down to SQL Server. Okay, the Entity Framework said, hey, give me ID, first name, last name, age from people, but here's the cool part where the age is greater than 30. Okay, the entity framework saw our objects in memory and said, oh, they want the people where their age is greater than 30. I can write a SQL statement for that and send that SQL statement down to SQL Server. Okay, that's, that's cool. Why? Well, I'll show you why. How many people have ages greater than 30? I'm actually going to copy this select statement, go back to our original uh, SQL Server here and just highlight this and hit F5 and then we'll just run this one query. And Hey look, only three people have ages greater than 30. In fact, let's run both queries at the same time. I'll run this one, my original one, and this one. F5, we have five people in the database, but only three of them have ages that are greater than 30. So if I go back here, remember I had the our .NET app space here we have the SQL Server, and so when we, when the plumber went to SQL, it said, hey, I only want the people whose ages are greater than 30, and so SQL said, here's one, two, three. We had to copy that data from SQL into our .NET application, all right? But, but if the people, if this people property was not a DB set and there was something else that would resolve to the enumerable instead of queryable, then this would be converted to code, no longer objects, and, and then we couldn't do that optimization where we say, hey, give me only the three people instead of five. I don't need the other two. Let me prove to you that that's the case. In fact, let me say dot as enumerable, which is simply a simple upcast, and it'll say, yeah, this is a DB set, but hide it as a enumerable. And now the dot where, if I hover over it, look, do you see it? Now the calls are being resolved to our enumerable versions and the func, not the expression of func. Alright, so then this code will be, this lambda expression will be converted to code, no longer expressions. Let's F10 on this. F10, F10, F10. Well, let's just pay attention to the trace here. Let me, let me get that off the screen and go down here. We'll go to the, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to just, trace is still around. I want to create a new trace, just clean it up a little bit. Connect. Events, let's get rid of all this stuff. 
and match starting run. Let's go back over to Visual Studio. F10 on this. Notice it didn't take take time there. That immediately returned. Why? Because we haven't talked to the database yet. Not until I say, hey, go actually get the data. We'll say, oh, well, we need to get all the, the people data. We saw that with deferred execution. Go watch the deferred execution videos if necessary. F10. And let's look at the trace here. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Our where clause is gone. Okay, we still have select, ID, first name, last name, age, people, but our where clause is gone. So then when the entity framework talked to our application and said, hey, I need all the people, so we had to bring along two extra people we know we're not going to be interested in, and then the filtering is happening in code. Right, no longer in SQL, no where age greater than 30. Instead, this is now a regular Lambda expression. I can put a breakpoint on there debug, toggle breakpoint, and I can I can break into this code. I can say, hey, F10, F10, age, age 25. Whose age is 25? Do you remember? Oh, my age is 25. Yeah, I wish, but my age is 25. So now I have to filter it here. Oh, bye-bye, Jamie. Okay, and then we get 42, and we do something with 42, and all that sort of thing. Anyway, probably too many words to describe what's going on. I'm sorry if that was confusing, but the idea here is, is with queryable, now my expression trees can be reasoned about. Now the entity framework can say, oh, you only want the people where their age is greater than 30. Say I had a gazillion records in my database. Oops, gazillion. That's a gazillion. All these records. And I had a where clause that really only wanted like one, maybe two records. But if I don't set my code up correctly, all of a sudden I'm going to pull all the objects that are going to have to come out of SQL into my .NET application space. That's going to take time, and I have to pull them off the disk in SQL, and then marshal them, with, transfer them over the wire into my .NET app, and then instantiate objects for every single one of them, these person objects. And that's just overhead. I don't want that overhead. When, when, if I can push that WHERE clause down to SQL, then SQL will only send me the two or whatever, however many records I'm interested in, and that's much more optimal.